Hi. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Hi. Welcome to Care of Paint and Pigment. We want to talk about the difference between a dispersion and a dry pigment. What is a dispersion anyway? Okay. Well, here's some dry pigments over here. And here are the dispersions over here. The dispersions are our specialty. This is what sets us apart, makes us a little bit different. We're a paint component system. The idea is you take these liquid pigment concentrates, which is what a dispersion is, and you add it yourself into the binder, i.e. the medium, the glue, that's gonna make your paint for you. And this way you get to control your paint and have very saturated, brilliant color. So all dispersions come from dry pigments. All colors come from dry pigments, dry powders. But then we grind them in the ceramic ball mill, the old fashioned way. My cameraman right now is Jody, who does all the grinding. Mm -hmm. Big heavy mills with uh, ceramic lined with ceramic balls inside and it spins and spins with uh, water and surfactant until it's at its finest grind, which is called a Hegman 8, which releases the potential of the color and makes it very brilliant and clean and gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> Let's show them the color chart, Joey. Okay. This is the color chart. <laughs> we we'll all be quiet. The color chart of all the dispersions painted out into one of our acrylic binders, acrylic 65, which is why that whole chart is glossy. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, put your dispersion into any binder and have it be matte, thick, thin, all sorts of possibilities. All right, let's go to the demo table. Okay. Okay. So first I want to visually show the difference. I know the sun is sort of, can you see this? Here on the left is the dry powder kind of loosely mulled into the binder. Mm -hmm. On the right is the dispersion into the binder. So you can see, how's the light? Can you see that through the camera, oh, yeah. the difference? Yeah. Okay. You can see how much different the right side, the dispersion, the finely ground one is. It's like a totally different color. So when those pigment particles are properly ground, it releases the color. So here we've got end and thrown blue red. Here we have quinacridone gold, one of our extinct colors. We have a lot of those. Here it is on the left. Um, here it is on the right. Radical change. Once that pigment is properly ground, it becomes much more luminous and vibrant, especially with transparent colors like this one. Yeah, especially with the transparent colors, it's more mostly about the surface area. Yeah, all those pigment particles have been separated and are doing the thing they're supposed to do. Transparency is really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and here's one more side by side, perylene green black. This is a stealth bomber color. This disappears in infrared lighting, interesting. On the left, you can see it's much more ruddy. On the right, it's much more clean. Okay. It's and, a bunch of abstract paintings, actually. It's yeah. It's not, okay, here, that looks good in the sun. You can see that one a little better. Yep. And maybe we should do them all in the sun because you can really see the difference. Really trying to highlight the difference between the dry on the left and the ground on the right. Uh, certain pigments have a much more radical change, but this one, this one has a super radical change. That's like, you don't, can't even believe that's the same color, yeah. but it is. Well, heterocyclic anthraquinone pigments are hard to grind. Hmm. Yeah, they're a harder, actually physically harder oh, yeah, pigment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're, they're really tough to break up. So all, yeah, all pigments are like different animals. They all have different properties and do different crazy things. Okay, so now I'm gonna make some paint. So I've got my binder in my cup, which is called Urethane 32. Mm -hmm. There's my demo version. This is um, crystal clear when it's wet. This is a water-based aliphatic urethane, which means it's non-yellowing. It's not like the aromatic time, uh, kind that you usually find. Okay, we shake our dispersions first because we keep them pure. So you might get some settling of um, contents because we refuse to put any clays or fillers in there to keep them suspended. So you just shake it first twist your cap, add a little bit. They're super concentrated. They make between eight and 16 times their volume. So I'm just gonna use a little dot in here. Hinton Thrones are a beautiful uh, indigo blue. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, really gorgeous. We just recently got this Hinton Throne blue green back. We've had the Hinton Throne blue red, but the 
and then throw in blue green is a little more difficult to find. Mm -hmm. So again, we get to add the color ourselves with this paint component system. So I think I'm gonna add a teensy bit more okay. to really bump up the saturation. Okay, now it's super dense and rich. Let's see the paint out. Okay, let's see the paint out. There we go. Ooh, so this has room. Yep. beautiful undertone, nice dark, rich mass tone. And that's the 6480, right? And throne blue green. Yep. Yeah. Nice, beautiful. I'm glad we got that back. Yeah, so I can take this pigment concentrate and add it to any water-based binder. Um, you can make watercolor, you can make egg tempera, you can put it into acrylic, matte gloss, what have you. People put it in plaster and do wall finishes. You can put it in grout. You can do anything with it. Actually, some people are putting it into oil successfully because of the surfactant that's in there, which uh, that's a whole nother discussion. But anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for joining.